Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, we're going to make a couple of really beautiful signs for Easter, and I'm going to show you how you can pretty easily make a cross out of twigs that you might have laying in your yard, or that might be laying in a local park, um, that kind of thing. So, this morning, my son, who is turned 22 today. Um, he is here visiting from out west and he and I took our dog Mia for a long walk and I picked up twigs. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you all that and um, let me set these aside because we're going to do the signs first and then we'll do the twigs. Okay and also I feel like I'm leaning. Just a moment ago I nearly knocked my whole entire camera over. <laughs> okay, so these are a couple of Dollar Tree wood panels. Um, they come from my store, which is a Dollar Tree Plus. They were $3 a piece. There's a rectangle and a square, all right? I just painted one good coat on the front of these before I came live. Uh, this paint that I love so much from Walmart. It's Waverly Chalk Acrylic uh, Matte Finish No Prep Paint, and this color is called Plaster. So I did one coat on each one of these. I sanded them, and then I took them outside, and I gave them a quick coat of clear matte sealer spray because Wood is funny, and if you've heard me say this before, I apologize, I'm like a broken record, but not everyone knows, wood is tricky. And um, what it wants to do, whether it's natural, it's stained, or it's painted like this, is it wants to suck in whatever medium you put on it and then spread it out. So if you're using something like a beautiful stencil like this old rugged cross, which we are gonna use, it it will be blurry unless you do something to prevent the wood from being able to suck the medium in. That's what this does. And when it's nice weather, this is my favorite. I'll go outside and do one quick coat. So I have done that for both of these. Um, we're also going to be using, I have some macrame cord, some twine. This is some Dollar Tree uh, luau skirt. So we'll be using some of that. And, um, oh gosh, I have twigs everywhere. And we're gonna do one of these in sort of this olive green color and the other one in gray. I know that's kind of boring, but this is my typical super neutral look, but you could do the same idea and use your choice of colors. We're gonna use um, a sponge to distress the edges. I'll show you that. And then I have a variety of stencils that I pulled out. And uh, we're for sure going to use this one, which is part of a two-piece stencil that's called the Old Rugged Cross. This is an awesome stencil because it's like literally a piece of sheet music that you can stencil on absolutely anything. And then it has a cross to go with it. Um, I think we're also going to use this one, For God So Loved. This is that John 316. But I did want to point out before I jump in that Magnolia has a ton of beautiful faith stencils. I love this one. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. This is that Isaiah one that we used recently that says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 10. This is a beautiful one too. And I just want to show you these real quick because the faith stencils are what drew me in to get involved with this company, Magnolia Design Company. And they're what keep me interested in it. And um, uh, that's just, you know, here I do everything that's related to either faith, family, or flowers, but the faith is the main thing. So this one says, Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp uh, unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's beautiful. Oh, this is the Esther 414. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. This is an oldie but goodie, and I just ordered a new one. 
with God all things are possible, Matthew um, 1926, for it is by grace you have been saved, or this is a new one, every good and perfect gift is from above, James 117. So I just wanted to show you that there are a, there is a big variety of face stencils available. Okay, so we're going to hop in just a second, but let me tell you a little bit more. This is a project that I made three or four years ago. This is not a magnolia stencil, so. But this was just a little piece of wood. These are some sticks out of my yard. This has been sitting in the closet for however many years. And my cross is still in pretty good shape. So we're gonna do something similar to this. And I was actually inspired to do this again by a beautiful post that my friend Brooke Riley of Refab did, where she showed how to make a cross out of twigs, and then she put a piece of that raw cotton in the center. It was beautiful, and I was like, ah, that's what I want to do today. Okay, so let's start. And I need these to dry just a little bit. That's why we're doing this first. Okay, let's start with the old rugged cross. And I think we're going to do that one in this olive green color. Okay, this is, it's not a new stencil, but I haven't used it a ton. And I don't want to stretch it when I'm taking it off. So I'm going to press it. This is called a tacky towel. It's great for fuzzing. It's also great for patting your stencils dry. And I'm just going to put my stencil on here twice and reduce the stickiness just a teeny bit. And then, I don't have enough spots to put everything. And then we'll do this. I do want it to be straight. That's pretty good. So I'm just putting my stencil on the board that has been sprayed with clear matte sealer spray so that it should give us a good stencil impression. And I'm going to press it down really, really good. This stencil has a ton of fine detail. So I don't want any air bubbles or any areas where it's maybe not stuck down to create a, you know, a blurry look. Okay. And like I said, we're going to use this olive green magnolia chalk paste. And then we're going to do, when we've done that, then we're going to do the edge in the same color of green chalk paste um, with a sponge. Okay. So I'm just going to take some of this green and I'm going to run it over my stencil. Especially when you're working on wood, it's important that you don't go over and over and over. I know I sound like a broken record there, but still, it's important. And if you're going to do a stencil project, you want it to look fabulous. And if you go over and over and over too much, you can press uh, some of your medium, which is chalk paste in this project, you can accidentally press it under the stencil and then it'll be all smeary and blurry looking. So I'm just applying it and then I'm scraping off the big globs. You can see that this really doesn't take very much. Um, also, I could do it, I could be doing this in black. Uh, brown would be beautiful. Um, silver or gold or copper. Uh, there's a ton of different options. So let me just get these big blocks up.
water. So excuse me for just a moment while I run into my bathroom and put a little water in here. This is what I'm referring to. This is my tub of water that I will throw my stencils in after. Um, I have used them until I can get out to the kitchen to clean them. Look how awesome that looks. Okay, it's gonna look even better after we do our little deal with the sponge. So I'm working on a paper plate here. Anyone, can you wash the tacky towel? If so, how? Melanie's asking that. Yes, you can wash it in your washing machine at whatever temperature you want. I usually wash it when I'm washing dish towels and bath towels. And you can even put it in the dryer. Um, there's no specific laundry detergent or anything that you need to, to use. Okay, so I'm gonna use, to do the edging, this is something that I've, figured out. Um, my friend Lisa started me on this kick of using sponges. This is a scrubby sponge from the kitchen that I've cut into smaller pieces. Anyways, it's a great way to do etching. So, and it's not wet. I'm going to dip it in my olive chalk paste and pat some of that off. And the first swoop is always scary. Oh, Juanita, you're so sweet to recommend that people give you a five, give me a five star review. That would be awesome, but uh, only do it if, if you know how to do it, because I'm not sure if I do, or if it's, if you really feel that way. Don't feel any pressure, but that's super nice of you to suggest it. <gasps> Look at that. Already. It almost gives, and I'll, I'll come back and show you. I'm going to just add a little bit more. It almost makes it like this is green wood. And I'm just trying to get sort of varying amounts of it. Oh my gosh, that looks fabulous. Okay, let's go this way. I'll hold this up in just a second to show you. I am never, I never cease to be surprised how awesome you can make a project with one of these scrubby kitchen sponges. And you don't have to cut yours up into smaller pieces. I just did that because I wanted to, but I mean, and when you're done, you just throw it in the sink, squeeze the chalk paste out of it. You can use a little dish soap if you need to, let it dry, and you can use it a hundred more times. Look at that. I think this is going to look super nice with the twig that we're going to turn into a cross. Okay, and I'm going to stop myself because <laughs> I can have a tendency to keep going and going and then I'm like, dang, I wish I would have stopped. Look at that. Thank you. I'm seeing all kinds of sweet comments. Also, I'm seeing lots of this and this, and I love that too. Feel free to sprinkle also if you want to. We're, we're gonna get to this part in just a minute. Okay, so that's the first one, and we'll be adding a cross to that. Now let's do the other one. The other one is a square, $3. I think this is 
12 by 12 from Dollar Tree Plus. It has the same one coat of plaster colored Waverly chalk acrylic paint from Walmart. Um, I sanded it and I sprayed it with my clear matte silver spray, just the same as the first one. Just looking to see which way I want it to go. And we're going to use this John 316 stencil, but in case you didn't guess it, we're not going to do this cross because we're going to make our own, all right? And I may have to come back after the fact and put the John 316 in because I'm going to probably have to scooch it over just a little bit. We're going to do this one in gray. Actually, let's do this one in brown. Let me see if I have um, chocolate colored chalk paste. I think that might be better. Okay, I just fuzzed it. Let me look. Here we go. This is called Chocolate Brown, and I just did the project that's on my um, bookshelves that says Just Breathe with this. It's a beautiful color. Okay, so let's apply this to the board. We're, we'll do the same kind of thing. Ooh, I might be able to get the John 316 in here. Yeah, I think I will. Yay. So, let me show you one little trick here. Press it down really good. Okay, I have a tendency to forget what I'm doing once I have a squeegee and some chart paste in my hand. That sounds terrible, but I do. So I'm just going to put a teeny little piece of masking tape on this cross. And it won't hurt it at all. It just is going to remind me, stop. Don't do that part. All right, let's get a new paper plate. And let's get a new scrubby. But first I'm going to do the words, then we'll do the edge. on here. There's not a lot to cover in this stencil. And I'm going to pull up the big globs. So tell me in the comments if you've ever made a twig cross or if you made a cross out of anything else that's kind of interesting. And if you have pictures, um, you could put them here. That would be great. Or put them over at Dreamy DIY. Uh, but I know it's good for getting ideas to see what other people have done. Okay. So, this is what it looks like. And I'm just going to peek and pull it up. It looks great. Okay. So I'm throwing this in my tub of water also, which has barely any water in it. Okay. So let's use the scrubby to do the same look. And then we'll be putting our cross turned slightly in this area. And hopefully it'll be all dry by then. Okay, I'm just gonna take some of my chocolate brown chalk paste and put it on my paper plate just like before and I'm going to take my scrubby and dip that in my chalk paste and then tap it off a little bit okay the first swipe <laughs> is always a little nerve-wracking for me oh my gosh this looks so pretty
If you like a heavier look, you can use more chalk paste or go over and over and over it. Um, if you get an area where you don't like it because there's kind of a darker blob, when you're all finished, you can use a antibacterial wipe or a um, paper towel that has some water on it. And you can wipe that off and start over because this is chalk paste and it is not permanent unless you want it to be. And then if you want it to be permanent, like as in forever, you can use a little clear matte sealer spray over the top and that will make it permanent. I may come back possibly and do the edges. I don't know, we'll see. My fingers cleaned off here. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Um, Jane says she always uses a sponge instead of a palette knife. Well, using a palette knife is kind of fun too, but it gives a completely different look. So it just depends on what you're wanting. Uh, but it is kind of fun to play with a palette knife. Okay, let's make some crosses. Let's get this junk out of the way. And then we'll come back and put them on. All right. And for the first one, for this, I am wanting my cross to be bigger. Okay, there's multiple options of what you can do with the center. This I just used jute. But I have some other things pulled out for today. This is what's left of one of those Dollar Tree Luau skirts. It reminds me of Raffia. This is some macrame cording. Or I have some jute. And I think for this one, we'll try this, okay? So, let's move this. Okay, we have had a lot of rain and storms in Atlanta Oops. recently. And so when I went on this walk this morning with my son, there was a good bit of these little branches that were down. So I just started picking them up. And I especially love this one because look, it has all that lichen on it. So we're gonna use this as the base for our bigger cross. And I'm just using some of these clippers. You can use whatever you have. I didn't do anything to this, these twigs. If you're concerned that they might have critters in them, this is hard to bend, you could um, bake them a little bit. I think I'll leave the little parts on and I may come back and take those off. So this is gonna be the up and down and then We'll do this for the cross that goes across it. And then we're going to add smaller pieces. All right. Also. All right, so I have my glue gun on and ready to go. This project is going to involve both the twine or whatever you use to tie the cross hatch. And it's also going to involve hot glue. And I'm just going to start. Okay, I need some more glue sticks. What do you guys think so far? Do you like this idea? I see there's a good bit of people on. If you like this idea, I would love it if you would consider sprinkling 
That would be awesome. Here's another twig that has this one have some of the lichen on it. Let's use this one. It has some of that same stuff, but I want the smaller pieces. I'm just going to kind of start building from behind. Let's see how I want to do that. There really is no right or wrong on this. Lower my camera a little, please. I'll try. Hopefully, I won't knock it over. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's better. So, we're just starting to add some layers. this part ahead of time because I wanted to do it live. We can remove all the glue strings after um, using a hot glue band. That usually helps. Look how pretty that looks already. I might take a little dab of brown paint or stain on this part right here, just so it disappears a little more. Okay. I really want smaller pieces to go across, so we'll just start grabbing some. You know, the, um, the actual cross that held our Savior, that he gave his, willingly gave his life up, for us on, it was not a thing of beauty. Obviously, I'm sure you know that. This is coming along. And it is going to be sort of fragile almost no matter what you do. So um, you're not going to want to stick this away in a box. You're going to want to... Um, I just have it propped up on a shelf in my closet where I have tons of crap projects. Yes, I did not want it to be ruined. And what I'm talking about is this. And I did this like many years ago. Okay, let's keep adding a little bit more. 
just looking at what do I have here. I'm going to do a couple pieces that go over the front of the up and down part of our cross. How was the birthday party? Did the hot tub feel good? Oh, thank you for asking. Um, it was great. We, my son is here in town, briefly, um, to celebrate his 22nd birthday. So we just had a family birthday party, and um, we had barbecue, and it was gorgeous in Atlanta. So we sat out by the swimming pool. If you're, if you're watching live, it's March 6th. 2023. If you're watching on replay, this none of this will make sense. But anyways, so we did that. We had a nice um, dinner, and then we got seven people in the hot tub, which I think is the most that we have ever done, and it was so much fun, and it felt wonderful. Yes. Okay, tell me what you guys think. Does this need more, or is it pretty right now? Let me show you on the... And I think I'm going to do it kind of crooked so that you can still read the title. I think it's plenty. Um, and there's also plenty of glue strings on here. <laughs> okay, well let's fiddle around with the um, thing that we're going to tie it together. And before I came live, I cut a piece of this macrame cord. And then you know there's different uh, plies in here and I just pulled it apart. So I have thinner pieces and I'm just gonna kinda go in one direction a few times. I'm not tying this super tight because I don't wanna pull my twigs apart. This will give it some support also. Not in the back here. You know, and however much you want to add is totally your personal preference. And the other thing is, suppose you want to put something in the center of this, um, this thing that we have tied at the crosshatch. You certainly can. That's absolutely up to you. to the back because this one is running out and we'll add a little more. Okay, this is the reason why I'm using a low temperature hot cleaning device because I've had more than enough hot glue burns on my fingers and I just don't want to do that anymore. same time. Maybe 
pretty uh, gentle with it. Because I don't want to break my twigs apart at this point. I think that's plenty. So let's tie a knot. This noise that you're hearing right now is our they're blowing off our back patio. There's a ton of pine needles and stuff down in our yard right now. What do you guys think? Let's have a little dab of glue. Cut this where my scissors are hiding here. This is going to be just beautiful. Okay, so then the next thing is to get this glued down, which is going to be a challenge. I'm going to rely mostly on this knot here. change if I was going to do it again is I think I would do it in either black or brown but the olive green is beautiful too and I just wanted to use that because I haven't used it in a while so what do you guys think the old rugged cross on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross it's going to make me cry the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where our Our um, Savior was best, for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old red, rugged cross. Tell my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged, rugged cross, cross as I exchange it someday for a crown. What do you guys think? Okay, let's do the other one. The other one we want to do smaller and thinner, and it's going to go right here. Okay, and I was thinking about this smaller one when I was picking up branches because I was thinking I want thinner. You know the um, the main parts are going to be pretty solid, but the rest that I'm going to fill in with, I want it to be shorter and I really I probably will use either some brown paint or some brown stain to make the ends of these twigs darker brown like the rest of them
these are wire cutters, but you could use uh, hedge trimmers. You could even use a good pair of scissors. Okay, here's some more for there. Let's get another good piece. do I want? Okay, let's fit them for a minute. Oh, I could use my markers. That's a great idea. Thank you for that suggestion. Gail yeah, says it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, um, you know, the cross was, I mean, it was not a thing of beauty. Unless you can appreciate what it was all about. And then it's the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world ever, ever. Okay, so I'm just starting there. And remember when you're making a cross that you don't want it to be smacked out in the center. Otherwise it will look like an X. And you don't want it to look like an X. Coming together little by little. And I'm layering my pieces both on the front and the back. It's not wanting to work. I want something with a little bit of a curve. I'm sorry if this is boring. Debbie says, thanks for sharing this craft idea with us. Oh, thank you. Jill says she loves it. I'm so glad. So what made me um, think about doing this project again, in case you missed this at the start of the video, was um, that I saw a beautiful twig cross made by Brooke from Refabbed. And I shared that to my page, to DIY Dreaming this morning. Um, and it had a, one of those natural pieces of cotton that she put right in the center. It was lovely. So I was like, ah, I've got to see where mine is. Because I did, I did this project so long ago. And um, yeah, once I got it out, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to do this again. I'm probably gonna get my, ooh, that still is hot, get my um, 
heating gun device out and use that to melt the glue strings before I officially attach it. Okay, let's do some of these pieces. Ooh, this is going to be cool. Thread a bit through here. How it's coming together. You could make just just a cross, you know, and mount it on whatever you wanted. You could even mount it on like a canvas. I think that would be lovely. Okay, let's look at this and see how it looks on our project. And I think it's going to be lovely. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to put any more pieces on it. And let's just tie that little cross thing in the center using some of this brown um, jute. Gentle. have enough to tie it so I'm just going to glue it on the back here. Isn't that pretty? I mean you could embellish that further if you wanted. Or Leave it really simple. So. I'm sorry, hold on to it. Here's the second one. I may decide that I want to clip it a little bit shorter. Right there. Anne Marie says she loves it simple. I do too. Ellen says she loves them. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. So that was our messy project for today. Um, I did glue this one down, so we're good to go with this. And this is the old rugged cross stencil. Um, this one right here says, for God so loved. And you know the rest of that verse, the world. <laughs> That he sent his one and only son um, to, to pay for our sins, that we could have eternal life. That's the gist of it. I don't know which translation that is, but anyways, um, I hope you like this project. When I'm all finished, I will get pictures, and I will... Hang on. I will put the pictures in the comments. Oops. And I just wanted to show you before I sign off that MagnoliaDIY.com has a ton of beautiful faith stencils. This one says blessed. This is a new one. We'll definitely use this. One cross, three nails, four given. Um, this one says, he is risen. I've used this a lot. 
This is a beautiful one that we just used recently. Every good and perfect gift is from above. This one says, for it is by grace you have been saved, and with God all things are possible. Matthew 19.26. This one says, perhaps you were created for such a time as this. This is the most beautiful book. If you have not read the book of Esther, you should. It's, it's beautiful. Um, here's that Isaiah, righteous right hand verse. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. And there's probably 40 more. So if you would like to hop over to my website and take a peek at what faith stencils are available, let me know and I'll give you the full link. It's about this long. <laughs> it's links for each individual one. So you can just click on it. It'll take you there. Click on the next one, it'll take you there. Click on the next, and just to make it super easy. Or if you want the links for these things that we use today, let me know that too. Um, I hope that I inspired you and showed you really how super easy this is. And I would guess that almost everyone who would, would be watching this can find some sticks and twigs and branches that have fallen of lots of different kinds of trees. So if you don't have them in your yard, check in your neighbor's yard. Or if you have a subdivision and there's, you know, any common areas, check there. Check at your local parks. Sometimes in parking lots, they have trees planted in different spots. Check there. Um, ask around. I'm sure you can find some twigs. And they don't have to be anything fancy. Um, it's kind of fun to go on a walk to look for them. It's like a little nature, uh, you know, search and find. And, oh, thank you, Susie. She says, my shop is magnoliadiy.com. And Ginny, I will get you the rugged cross stencil link too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will get pictures. I will put them here. And on DIY Dreaming, do a this or a this. Or say something to me in the comments. Look to see if you've liked and followed this page. Um, turn on your notifications. And maybe <laughs> you'll ever see me again. I don't, I'm just being silly. But it is very odd how Facebook is hardly um, showing videos to anyone these days. And I'm not the only one. I hear from a lot of my crafting friends that I don't know why it is but so all that to say that you can increase the chances that facebook will actually serve you what i have going on here um, by doing a this a this saying something in the comments liking and following and turning on your notifications but if that doesn't work you can just come to this page absolutely anytime you want by um, typing in the facebook search box diy dreaming all smushed together you can do that also at youtube so I'm seeing lots of encouraging comments that they love this project. Linda Sue says she loves you, me. That's awesome. Jennifer says it's cute. Do I sell any of my projects? No, I'm sorry, Bernice, I don't. Uh, what I do do here at DIY Dreaming is show you how you can make them in your style, you know, to go in your decor. And I just want to inspire and show you how you can do all these things yourself. Okay, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you guys very soon back here on DIY Dreaming.